At the beginning of the movie we are introduced to a special DEA agent named Tony and his friend Juan. At that time Tony, Juan and other police officers were in a hurry to raid a drug house. On their way, Juan told Tony that his wife was pregnant and he would soon have a child, and Tony was very sympathetic, knowing that Juan had long yearned for a child. Long story short, when they arrived at the scene of the raid, Tony told Juan to just wait in the car and let him handle this case with his men. Afterward, the people in the building were immediately secured and will soon be taken to the police station. Later on Tony and some of his men went upstairs where they met a dealer and a woman in the middle of a transaction. Tony also met a bodyguard who looked so calm despite the fact that he was about to be arrested. When the suspects were about to be brought downstairs, the bodyguard suddenly grabbed the policeman's gun, and a shootout ensued. Meanwhile outside the building, Juan's wife called him to ask about the preparation of their baby's room, and at the same time, the escaping bodyguard ran into Juan, so he loaded Juan with bullets. When Tony saw that his best friend was dying, he became very sad and angry. The scene then switches to a man named Nick who was enjoying his time on the boat that he used as his floating home. A few moments later, his friend Francis, a government employee, approached him. Francis said that the government wanted to work with Nick again to carry out a mission. For your information, Nick was a former hitman who often worked for the government. At first, Nick refused the offer because he had retired a long time ago, especially since he was no longer young. However, after Francis persuaded him with the promise of being rewarded with a lot of money, he finally accepted the mission. The mission given to Nick was to eliminate a group of dealers who wanted to bring down the American economy. On the other hand, Tony, who was currently in his office, still felt devastated over the death of his best friend, Juan. His boss had advised him to take a leave of absence, but Tony declined it, as he wanted to keep working. At the same time, Juan's wife came and immediately poured out her heart to Tony. She asked him to arrest the person who had killed her husband as soon as possible. Later on, Tony and his boss tried to interrogate the dealer who had been caught in the previous raid. Tony asked who was supplying him with illegal goods, and the dealer said that his boss was not just an ordinary supplier, but something else, as he had bigger plans. Tony's curious boss asked what the plan was, and the dealer replied that he would tell him the information as long as they let him stay in a luxury hotel when they extradited him out of the country and he asked for his sentence to be commuted. Hearing this, Tony's boss agreed to fulfill the man's request. The next day, Nick packed up his weapons and changed his license plate. After getting information about the whereabouts of his target, he then immediately rushed to the area. Once he arrived at his target location, he then enjoyed an iced coconut while observing the area. He then went to an apartment across the street while carrying his golf equipment, which actually contained a weapon that would be used to finish off the target. Right across the street, the dealer was getting a massage at a hotel, as per his request yesterday. A few moments later, Tony and his men came to pick him up. Tony told the dealer to get changed immediately, as he would be taken back to the police station. When the dealer was about to get into the car, suddenly someone shot him dead. It turned out that Nick's first target was the dealer. Tony then immediately ran across the street to find the shooter. He had actually crossed paths with Nick, but obviously no one would have guessed that Nick was the perpetrator of the shooting. The next day at the DA office, Tony's boss said that his secret agent had suspected a group of people who were thought to be the dealer's boss, so he told Tony to keep an eye on them. Long story short, Tony and his men then conducted a stakeout, but unfortunately the CCTV camera that they managed to hack did not make any sound, so they could not hear any conversations. Therefore, Tony then took the initiative to enter the place by posing as a customer. However, it turned out that Tony was not allowed to come inside the room, only VIP customers were allowed to enter. Then he saw a chef who was about to leave the place. Tony then immediately followed her. When she was outside, Tony approached her and asked her to get acquainted, but she refused and walked away. But once he pointed out that he was a DEA agent, she finally agreed to talk to him. Her name was Mina, and at that time, Tony asked her to help him put a recording device on the table in the VIP room where she worked. At first Mina refused it, knowing that if she got caught, then she would definitely be fired by her boss, but after some persuasion by Tony, Mina finally agreed. Later that night, Tony saw that Mina had placed the recording device that he had entrusted to her through the CCTV. Meanwhile in the same place, it turns out that Nick is also preparing to carry out his next mission. He saw a group of people entering the room and they were apparently going to have a meeting there. As Tony and his team were watching the group, they instead moved away, making it impossible for him to know what they were going to talk about. Nick then enters the back of the building through an emergency exit. In this scene, 
we are finally introduced to a big boss named Hussein bin Fari. Fari is a supplier of illegal goods who also wants the American economy to be completely paralyzed, and in order to realize his plan, he hired a scientist to make a sophisticated device that is capable of turning off an entire city's electricity with just one tap on a cell phone. A little while later, Nick arrived and started attacking them. Fari's bodyguards and his right-hand man were taken out by Nick, while Fari and the scientist and his remaining men were able to escape. Later on, Tawny arrived, but the battle was already over. The next day, Mina was surprised to find out that the place where she worked had been closed by the police. On the other hand, Fari asked the scientist to immediately complete the sophisticated device, because last night's device was still in the experimental stage. The scientist was willing to complete it, but Fari had to pay him $50 million. Fari finally approved the request. Later that evening, Tony went to a party organized by Fari's niece. Tony tries to ask her about her uncle's whereabouts, but she doesn't know it. At the same time, Tony met Mina who happened to be the chef at the event. Elsewhere, without knowing it, apparently Fari was watching over him somewhere, and the bodyguard who had killed Juan was also there. The bodyguard says that Tony is a DEA agent, who must be targeting them. Knowing this information, Fari immediately told the bodyguard to kill him off. When Tony accidentally saw Nick at the party, he matched the photo on his cell phone but later he found that Nick had already left. The moment Tony was about to chase after him, he met Mina and then he invited her to chase Nick. Unfortunately, in their pursuit, they did not manage to catch him. The following day, Tony resumed his search by staying around the location where Nick disappeared last night. He eventually managed to find his car, and he immediately ran after him and then asked Nick for his identity. As it turns out, Nick is Tony's biological father who abandoned him when he was in secondary school. Nick then took Tony to his ship at the dock. Tony then asked him why he abandoned him after his mother's death, and Nick then explained that he was a mercenary assassin who worked for the government. After Tony's mother was killed by his enemies, he was worried about Tony's safety, so in the end he decided to leave him for the sake of his safety. Upon hearing it, Tony finally understands Nick's decision. Nick also explains that their current mission shares the same goal, which is to hunt down Fari who is trying to destroy the American economy. As Tony is about to go home, Nick gives him a cell phone so that he can call him back. However, when Tony was about to get into his car, suddenly the bodyguard and some of Fari's men immediately knocked him down. Unfortunately, Nick could not do anything to help him after he was beaten down. The scene switches to the scientist who is currently being asked by Fari about when the device he ordered will be completed. The scientist says that he still needs about 24 hours. A few moments later, Fari's men came over and brought Tony. Fari then asked him about who was the sniper who had killed many of his men and Tony said that it was his father's doing. Then Fari told his men to torture him. On the other hand, Nick rushed off to find Tony, using the GPS that he had previously installed on the cell phone he had given to Tony. All of a sudden, the electricity in the building where Fari and his men were torturing Tony, went out, and unbeknownst to them, Nick was already in the room and he quickly killed them all. Some people died while others managed to escape. Nick then took Tony back to his ship to be treated. After the incident, the police, including Tony's boss, arrived at the crime scene and they only found a few of Fari's dead men. Tony's boss finally finds the device that Fari will use to destroy the American economy. The next night when Tony was talking to Nick, he was suddenly contacted by Mina, who apparently was taken hostage by the bodyguard. The bodyguard asked Tony to meet him right away. Tony then rushes to leave to save her, but Nick stops him and asks him not to be reckless, and Nick then offers his help. When they arrived at the meeting location, Tony approached the bodyguard who was holding a gun on Mina. The bodyguard asked Tony to call his father and tell him to come too. But suddenly, from the other side, Nick launched his shot at the bodyguard and hit his shoulder. The bodyguard was finally cornered and Nick then asked about Fari's whereabouts. In the end, the bodyguard was willing to take them to Fari's residence, but on condition, they would pay him $1 million. The scene then moves to Fari's residence. The scientist asked Fari to make immediate payment for his services, as his family was in need of money. However, Fari says that he can't pay him because the device is currently in the hands of the police. Then this is what Fari did, he shot him. That was enough. Fari's niece who saw the whole thing was shocked, because she had just found out that Fari was a criminal. A few moments later, the bodyguard came while pointing a gun at Nick, and carrying a body bag. 
when the body bag was opened, it turned out to be Tawny, who was pretending to be dead. Earlier, the bodyguard said that Fari was very stingy, so he was forced to betray him. Nick then told Fari's niece to leave, as he knew she knew nothing about Fari's crimes. Fari's men tried to attack, but Tawny and his father could easily eliminate them all, including Fari. Let's talk about this! No. The bodyguard then demanded his $1 million from Nick, but Nick said that if he wanted the money, then he should find a job. 30 minutes later, the police came to the scene only to find that Fari and all his men had been killed. They also found a body bag and when they opened it, it turned out to be the bodyguard. The movie then ends with a scene where Tony, Nick, Mina and Juan's wife and son get together on Nick's boat to enjoy their lunch. Juan's wife then thanks Tony for telling her about Juan's insurance so that her son can live properly after Juan's death. Moments later, Francis called Tony and gave him a secret mission in San Diego.